Hey guys, what's up? In today's tutorial, we are going to take a look at the three different pad sound of Melodic Techno. So I tried to cover the most used uh, pad sounds in the genre. And of course, you may argue that, and you are right, that uh, there are much more different pad sounds than three of them. And you, you are definitely right. But I tried to cover like the simple, um, or I wouldn't say simple, but most, most common uh, pad sounds so that you have at least something to begin with. But before we start with the video, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit that bell button so that you get notifications when we make a new video a new video like this other than that let's take a look so basically i have this uh, kick bass and i would say plug sound to start with and it sounds actually like this i would say quite melodic techno sounding uh, loop but there are different things that are missing, I would say. And we begin with kind of a background pad sound. And this will be almost, this will be present almost all the melodic techno tracks, I will say. There is always this kind of background sound that makes the track warmer and much more filled. So what we are going to do, basically put a serum like this and put it into the initial preset. What I'm going to do is more or less play it on the root note or root, I will say, um, the chord and then just stay, make it stay there and fill the space. To do that, I'm just gonna put a kind of a simple filter and I'm gonna drag it down here. And this one is actually in the F minor. So let's take this off and let me turn off my V so take off myself so that you can actually see, see everything there so it is the f if you play let me sorry of course this is not the sound what we are looking for but we are just confirming that is actually f minus because it doesn't sound kind of dissonant even though we play just simple note so what we are going to do build the f minor on top of this if you don't know the, the chord progression F minor basically, or any minor chord is like the root note and the third and the fifth. So if you count one note, one full note and half note and two full note. And if you don't know how to do this, I will say you can basically try to implement this. So I'm gonna move this like this. Oops. Let's put it here. Okay. like this and let's do it this way one full note one half note one full note one full note another full note and another half note sorry it should be this way and let's put it here so to build again the minor chord uh, the third and the fifth one two three four five already filling up the space I would say let's put it in full here or maybe I like this the problem at this part is it's a bit too focused so it's not like a focus on a simple area so what I'm going to do is actually put the third an octave above so that it spreads a bit more much better but the issue at the moment is actually it is just simple oscillator and it's focusing on a simple area and what we are going to do put the unison spread it around decrease the detention slightly and you can even put kind of reverb if you wish You want your background pads as stable as possible. You can definitely make slight movement, like slight movement probably in the cutoff, while it shouldn't be too much, like this maybe. And you can try a bit movement on the detune and other things, but I wouldn't suggest because this is supposed to be like in the background 
and this is supposed to be as stable as possible. The other thing that you can do though, at the moment this is kind of a bit too low. What I will do, I will definitely put an EQ, EQ8 here. It's nice and warm, but it's really nice for using low pads. So this could be my low pads. Let's call it low. That means that I need another pad for the background, which is high pad. And if we just put another pad, by the way, I forget putting myself back. Here we go. And then let's put in one octave above. And let's play then see what happens and open this up. The issue at this point is that because the, we are utilizing exactly the same as I would say oscillator type, they are a bit too similar to each other. So there is not enough contrast in low pad and high pad. So I will suggest use an, using another oscillator at least to make the sound a bit slight, a bit different than the low pad. So what I'm going to do at this point is just take this one, put another shape, and try to find up something that that fits nicely. I feel like this sounds nice. It's a bit too loud. Let's mix a bit better. Again, you don't want your pad sounds or high pad to go too much above in this area because this is where your high hats and all of the type of percussions sits. So you don't want to get there too busy neither. So I often suggest like keep it here. Let's try a bit chorus on top of that as well. That's better. And let's make it a bit more stable by putting it to third or fourth, or unstable by putting it fourth. And I would definitely group them up. And because it's like a background pad, it's always nice to have a slight compression onto your kick. So that the, the side, side chain or groove going on in the sound. And I would just do it in the group so it is applied on both pad sounds. Feel like the high is a bit too high. Let's drop it a bit more. Something like this. And if you put a reverb after your side chain, you it means that your side chain will be a bit smoothened out, and it actually adds a quite nice feeling to the sound. And let me put a reverb here, and let's try it out. smoothens out and sounds much more pleasurable I would say the one thing that you can also do like add any type of like a distortion or any type of processing here as well but I would often to put an EQ just to make sure that I am not going too much high or too much lows and I would definitely put a glue to glue them a bit even a bit more Yeah, now we have this kind of really nice um, background pads. And let's try what they do without. It's just too empty and with. It just gives this kind of really nice soundscape to the track. And you almost always have this type of sound in melodic techno tracks, I would say. The second type of pad sound is actually often called like a polysynth and or the lead pad and this type of sound actually kind of follows the uh, chord progression of the track and if i just move this one here and just put a serum 
uh, let's put it here. Because this kind of sound is all the delete sound, I'm going to take off the plug sound. So we are trying to make this sound a bit like a more lead soundish. So let's play. Let's take off. Turn this off, turn this off, turn this off. Of course, put this in initial preset. At the moment, like I mentioned, this is a bit too simple, but we are going to build a chord progression on top of that. So basically, I'm putting a C my uh, this one, it's a major, and then we are putting a A sharp minor. And an F minor. So if you cannot remember how we did it, like the put do the way I've shown you, like put the F F minor uh, tune here, so that you all, you see all the possible notes that you can play with, and start playing around a little bit afterwards. And definitely hear that this is sounding weird because I just put the C sharp to the wrong place, so it's supposed to be actually here. Oftentimes when you have this type of uh, pet sound, you also have kind of a contrast melody on top of that because it's just a regular chord progression, you would like to have a contrast on top of that. So what we can do actually try to come up with a melody that can play differently than the original one. The original one is basically going down, so we can try to go up and down in this one. <laughs> Something like this. So we go up and down rather than going down all the time. So you have to keep this like a contrast melody in the background so that you can try out. And oftentimes they work quite nicely. And then what you can do, you can spread around the sounds a bit. Let's put the third nose one octave below and see if that works. This is definitely not working, so let's try something like this. Much better. And then of course, this type of sounds has to have kind of an interesting character to it. So you have to play with the cutoff, you have to play with your oscillators, you have to play with your tuning, you have to play with your effects, so a lot of things has to be moving around. So in easiest way to do, let's put this in the unison. And we would like to actually play with the wave pedal position a bit. Let's come up with some nice... Maybe like this one. Yeah, this is much better. Let's put the LFO on top of that. And let's play around. Let's play a little bit with the blend as well. Slower. Let's put another contrast on top of that. So what I mean by that, turn the slider B, put it on the neck door above, put it into Unison. Volume down a little bit. Let's find some interesting. Let's mirror this up a little bit. Or we can even try kind of FM stuff, but I think it will be a bit overkill. We can try maybe bending. Making it a bit more like a square way, basically, and put an LFO. So you can hear the effect a bit more, like this. Let me turn this off. You can definitely do it faster. Interesting. 
you can definitely play with the reso uh, resonance and play with a bit cutoff so that the sound moves around a little bit more. Probably better right to use another LFO in this case. Slower, maybe? Maybe it's faster. Maybe triple or double or the dotted. We can do it this way. So this type of sounds also needs kind of uh, glue because the moment is too much. And then of course it's always nice to have side chain to the kick effect or this kind of groove feeling. And here you can actually go as aggressive as you want. Kind of more like a, I would say EDM feeling or a bit more progressive house feeling with this one if you do more aggressive side chaining. Of course, maybe cut off a bit the super lows. If you want to put some air, actually, you can put some white noise. Let's go for kind of uh, analog white, I would say, bright white. And actually, you can use another LFO and side chain it, kind of, here. Something like this. Let's put it on top of the level. And the one thing that I feel like this can use actually a little bit more reverb. And even delay could be nice in this case actually, honestly, even chorus. I think this is enough. This kind of really nice polysynth sound that kind of even used for kind of a lead sound, especially when you don't have too much like arps or too much lead sound on the background. So you need kind of a, this transition period or the verse, I will say, and you can utilize this easily. And the third one in this case is kind of tension pads. And this is mostly used for like going down to the break or going from break to the verse. Uh, and they're supposed to create a lot of tension. And they do that most of the time by utilizing pitch modulation, I would say. So they basically go out of tune and going out of tune creates oftentimes tension in the music. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to copy the this chord here, I would say, right here. Let's play. And let's put a serum, of course. and put this into the initial preset, put a filter. The f you can either play with the uh, pitch here, like this, or if you are actually using unison, which is most of the time what you would do, because it just spreads around and it's much e nicer sounding, then you will start with the really low detune, like super stable here, and then while you are going into the break, you will increase this one so that it gets more and more unstable. And if you play... Something like this. So depending on how much tension you want to build, it, it's up to you. And then oftentimes you play it with the cutoff as well. So the close in the beginning, it's more open in the later. So let's try something like this.
nice and easy. So what I'm going to do, like you see here, I have the kick is out and I have the plug. I'm going to kick the plug sound and then try to see if we can build kind of a brick. What I would do in this case, let's put a crash, kind of a reverb, reverse crash. And this will just do. Let's zoom in, put it here, and volume it down a little bit. And let's take a look. Of course, there's a problem at the moment because it ends abruptly, so it's just weird. But we are going to do actually put a release so that it just we have it just kind of a nice tail on top of that. An EQ. We have EQ already, but anyway. So let's put it like this. And often you can also put a little bit air. Air means most of the time just white noise. Again, the tail is not enough. Let's increase the tail. And even we can utilize a reverb so that the tail is a bit more smooth. Let's just play here. Again, longer. But I will definitely have it from the reverb more than the release. Maybe a bit more. Again, this kind of it like a tasting, so you can decide how much you want to have it and how long the tail will be. Nice. Again, if you play from the beginning, you will hear a bit better. So without utilizing almost anything, just a reverse crash, we already give this kind of into the break feeling because the detuning the pad gives a lot of tension to the sound. Of course, you can utilize a bit more things over there and make it a bit smoother, but even this is good enough. And I think this brings us to end of this video. It became a long one. Uh, sorry for that. Uh, pads are always a bit more complicated than other type of sounds and it's harder to explain some things, I will say. But other than that, I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you learned something and see you in the next time. Goodbye.